In this video, I'm going to show you how we soundproof this lounge diner in this old terrace property. Now, our homeowners here, they're suffering from noise from neighbours. They're hearing loud music, TV, conversation coming through this separating party wall. Our homeowners want to be able to sit peacefully in their lounge without being disturbed by their neighbours, but they also want to have gatherings of people and family round and entertain late into the evening without worrying about disturbing their neighbours next door. So I'm going to show you how we soundproofed this lounge diner, taking the room from this to this to this. The first thing we had to deal with was the suspended floor void. Now there was a lot of broken joists, some of them rotten, and we took the opportunity to replace the joist and insulate that suspended floor void. We insulated the suspended floor void to reduce the drafts coming through to make the room more thermally efficient, to reduce road traffic noise. You've got the vents out the front of the property and road noise was coming in through those vents and then up through the floor, but mainly to reduce the neighbor noise, which was coming through the separating party wall and resonating in this big hollow void of the suspended floor void. That big hollow suspended floor void was acting like a bit of a drum amplifying the neighbor noise. Once we leveled up the floor, got the floor stable, we started to look at the plaster on the walls. Those of you on the noise-free DIY soundproofing course might recognize some of these pictures from the wall preparation lesson. Because of the age of the property, there is a lot of blown and loose damaged plaster on a lot of the walls. So you can see all the usual places where you find loose and blown damaged plaster. We've removed that back to brickwork. I just want to be clear, you don't have to remove the plaster back to brickwork in order to soundproof your walls. There's only two occasions where you would need to remove the plaster back to brickwork and that's if you have dot and dab plasterboard or the plaster like in this case is blown and loose and it won't support the heavy duty layers where we need to sound deaden the wall. A lot of the installations we do we are removing other people's soundproofing attempts and when we remove those soundproofing attempts it pulls the plaster back to the brickwork. Now I don't show all those because it would just the soundproofing material suppliers off if I just show video after video of of their products being removed when it when it's not it's not their fault it's the way that they've been installed so uh, that's why a lot of my videos go back to brickwork because we're removing soundproofing attempts but just to be clear you only need to remove plaster back to brickwork when it's dot and dab plasterboard been installed there because that amplifies and makes the noise worse and if it's blown or loose damaged plaster. Now I did have a comment the other day from a DIY on the on the noise free DIY soundproofing course who wanted to remove the plaster in order to create more space. I think they were considering doing their stairwell wall. Uh, that is quite common for a DIY to remove the plaster from an area such as a stairwell wall to, to create that extra space just so they don't have to adjust some of the fixtures and fittings like the door linings or architrave and things like that. But for us at installing, it's never been the case where we remove plaster to create that space. We've always adjusted the fixtures and fittings for the soundproofing. Leaving the plaster on the wall, if it's good solid render pl wet plaster on the walls, it's very good for mass uh, and it creates that nice flat surface for the sound deadening materials to go on. So I would recommend leaving it on if it's if it's good, if it's not blown, and of course only remove it if it's dot and dab plasterboard or blown or hollow. I hope that makes sense. I hope that clears that point up. Because of the weight of the sound deadening materials that we're applying to these walls next, the viscoelastic membranes, the 20 mil rubbers, that's going to pull off any blown or loose plaster. So you, you have got to make sure the plaster is structurally sound before applying that. Because they're hearing TV, conversation, music coming through the walls, the walls are like a ringing drum cymbal and you need to sound dampen them. You can't just build a frame or clip or channel system in front of them, they need to be sound deadened first. Just like a ringing drum cymbal, when you put your hand on it, you see I've got myself some new ringing drum cymbal footage from one of our drum room studios we just finished. Okay, so you need to sound deaden those walls like when you put your hand on a ringing drum cymbal. And these first layers here in the alcoves with the viscoelastic membrane and here over the chimney stack with the 20 mil rubber, that's exactly what we've done. We've sound deadened those, those areas, tucking it down uh, beneath the floor and, and those other flanking areas with that 20 mil rubber. If we're following the four step soundproofing method for this lounge diner, we have the main cause of the suspended floor void. And you can see we've already treated that suspended floor void in order to create that 
working environment, leaving traps for us to tuck the wall systems down when we get to the walls. There is also a main cause of that hollow RSJ perpendicular here where sound will resonate in that hollow void and transfer noise will transfer from the separating party wall here across the whole of the property. So this RSJ needs to be sound deadened and insulated and then we're putting a 35 mil system over that archway section. For the direct noise path we have the alcoves, the chimney stack and the fire back. Here we'll be installing that 95 mil, the 100 mil system that we show you in the seven ways to soundproof a wall. If you click the link here, oh no I need a thousand subscribers for that feature. The link for this that is in the description down below if you haven't seen that video already, seven ways to soundproof a wall and the system that we'll be installing is the Batten insulation system uh, where, where it's a 95 mil thick and that'll be installed to the alcoves and around the chimney stack it'll be a 50 mil two inch system installed to the chimney stack which uh, again we show you on the seven ways to soundproof a wall video. The indirect noise pass for this project is the window wall where we'll be installing a 35 mil thick system to this window wall which improves the thermal value of the wall. It will return into the windows improving the uh, sound efficiency and the thermal efficiency of the windows as well. And the main reason we're doing this window wall is to reduce the noise flanking down this window wall. This is a separating party wall and noise is transmitting through the structure down this window wall. The ceiling will be boarded with a 15 mil sound block board to reduce the noise coming over but also to reflect our homeowners noise back into the room when they want to entertain late into the evening. The rest of the walls it was dusty blown plaster so we're just going to wet plaster the walls with a thistle hard wall. The system we're installing to the alcoves is a viscoelastic membrane sound dampening the wall. Then we put the battens on anti-vibrational pads with a 50 mil rock wall between tucking the system all the way down to the subfloor. We're then using a mass loaded vinyl followed by resilient bars, a fibre board and a 15 mil sound block board. To the chimney stack we're installing our TPS65 which is the 50 mil system which we show you in the soundproofing secrets course. The link for that is in the description down below. And there's a few other things we're doing in this room as well for the homeowner such as reducing the toilet noises coming from the, the bathrooms and the en suites above. If they have guests around and they go to the toilet you can hear when they flush the toilet down in this lounge where they want to entertain. And this is the four inch waste pipe which comes down from the bathrooms and en suites in the rooms above. The best reduction in noise comes from rapid in the pipes with that viscoelastic membrane and don't put the rock wall in too tight. Box it in as normal but then put two layers of sound block board around the boxing in. Some of you might have already noticed you haven't done the whole of the wall Jim. How come you've only gone up to a section of the wall? Well you might have seen this on other on my other videos when you have the old terrace property sometimes there's a little concrete nib and what we've done is we've soundproofed up to that concrete nib because for this case we're going to install a uh, bespoke coving and if we went over that nib it just wouldn't work with the coving. The homeowner didn't want to take any more space away that's why we've installed the 100 mil system which fitted really nice with the, the little nibs that stuck out. What we did do whilst this room was being plastered is we went up into the rooms above and we soundproofed the floor. So we're starting to put some of the fixtures and fittings back including the fire surround and some skirting. We're not skirting the whole of the room because we're going to put some bespoke cabinets in place. All skirting and architrave is all isolated from the soundproofing and so are these cabinets and shelving. They're all put back in a way that doesn't compromise the new soundproofing. We show you how to do every fixtures and fittings. There's pretty much a lesson on every fixtures and fitting in the noise free DIY soundproofing course to ensure that when you install these fixtures and fittings back to your new soundproof walls, they don't compromise the new soundproofing. Now that is how we go about soundproofing this lounge diner. Now if you're a DIYer, builder, looking to soundproof your own home, then why not consider the noise free DIY soundproofing course? There is a bit of a waiting list for the noise free DIY soundproofing course at the moment. If you click the link in the description, you can join that waiting list and we'll let you know when the next slot becomes available. That's it for now guys. I hope this little video helps. Let us know any questions you have in the comments down below and I'll see you on the next video.